a really cool study going on right now where we're using a couple different sports technologies to do some looking at things that really haven't been examined in the past. So we're looking at uh, flywheel technology and the forces that are involved with flywheel technology and comparing it to mass-based loading. Uh, our thought is that flywheel loading will produce a greater ground reaction force on a similar exercise than mass-based loading. So we've got a couple different protocols that we're putting people through. We're testing them on a 1RF max with traditional mass-based loading, figuring out what that is. And then we're going to have them on another day do five reps looking at peak and average force with our force dex force platforms on mass-based loading at 50% and 80%. So a higher velocity kind of speed strength load as well as something close to an absolute strength load. And then we're going to come back uh, and on another day we are going to look at uh, similar force outputs, ground reaction force outputs on our force decks, force platforms using the K-Box 4 from Eccentric. And what we're going to do is look at the force output, eccentric and concentric, uh, on force plates. Uh, with a small inertial load and a high inertial load. So that one won't be individualized by person. There isn't really a standard for that yet or how to determine kind of percentage-based loading. It is uh, accommodating resistance. But we will be able to tell uh, whether the ground reaction forces uh, eccentrically and concentrically are an average and peak are different between mass-based loading and flywheel loading and see how those changes differ at high and low load. So it's a pretty interesting study. We're looking to publish it, uh, collecting the data over the next couple weeks and then eventually get it published. And I think it should be some seminal work and interesting findings that will be relevant for uh, coaches and sports scientists.